Hello again for an exciting episode where I'll be sharing some tutorial of a new AI video gen for Comfy UI. Today I got some cool toolbox add-on for a workflow that allows for hands-free gens that could run for hours unattended. So what are toolbox exactly? Well, it's really just add-on of our Comfy workflow. Uh, two new ways of doing this in a hands-free mode. All of this still follows the five basic concept, the text gen, the vid gen, the upscale, uh, laden guidance, and the finalization of the merge there. All of this is the same as before. So please check out previous video to see how it was done. But now I'm doing an add on to this, right? So this is the usual uh, one workflow that I have there where it includes everything with Hunyuan and Wan. Now, the only change that I'm adding is really those two extra toolbox that we can allow us to do what we want there for the batch image to video one gen, right? So for toolbox number one, you fill up a folder with many, many images, as many as you want. You set some sleep time between gens because you, you want to give a break to your, to your GPU. Uh, this is fully automated hands-free workflow. So once you run this, it's going to process all the image in that, in that folder. And this could run for hours, right? So that sleep time between gens is, uh, it will be a good thing there. So this is for the batch of the folder. Now let's look at toolbox number two, which is the infinite recursive gen loop image to video one. Really it's just what we're doing before where we do a loop uh, generation there the last image becomes the first of the next video but now it's going to be in a hands-off workflow you click run you let it go and it's going to be generating literally forever until you stop it right so uh, be mindful that there's some quality loss over time but this is true even before uh, and that's why we were taking the time to select the right video in between but with the one it's it's a bit it's a bit more forgiving so this is just to show that when we were trying to uh, do this with a direct connection, uh, it was giving us a loop error, right? Because Comfy UI does not allow a direct loop there. So how did I solve this? Well, I'm, I'm using a file as a recursive medium. So basically at every loop, I save automatically the file and that file will become the the input, my, that file being the image there, right? So the last image become the input of the next run, right? And this, this image will be overwritten every time, right? So you take image, you go through the whole loop, you overwrite that image so that the last frame becomes a new image, which then becomes the input of the next loop there. And all of this is done hands-free. So let's, uh, let's look at the workflow a bit closer so that uh, we see how this is set up. So in this case, I won't explain the whole uh, workflow. I mean, there's other uh, video that showcase this. I'm going to focus more on the toolbox, right? So the two toolbox that I'm talking about. So there's the one batch folder and the one image to video infinite uh, generation. So let's look at the toolbox number one, right? The uh, generation folder batch, right? So you just fill up the a, a, a folder on, on your on your desktop there and then you run it and it's going to process all the image in it. It's important to follow the little instruction there basically to set value to zero for that. So that starts at the, at the first image and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you put the, uh, the correct folder that you put everything in. So uh, be mindful of that. And uh, th that's the sleep time. So make sure you put the right sleep time so that it, uh, uh, there's a little rest time for the GPU in between images. So let's look at uh, toolbox number two. So let's zoom in a bit here. So to toolbox num number two is really just to do the image to video infinite gen, right? So just a reminder here to do the uh, video loop. You have LoRa, you have Prom, you have the input image. That, that serve as input to the image to video model. And it generates a, a, a video, a generated AI video there. You take that video, you bring it back to the beginning, taking only the last frame and you run it again. And that allows us to do the image to video generation in an infinite way. 
but all this was done manually at every loop. Now with this toolbox, it's going to be doing it automatically. It's going to find the last frame of the video. It's going to do a flip. The, the flip is just meant here to, to give more uh, generation difference there so that, you know, it doesn't stabilize into a, a single frame, single way of, of uh, animation. It uh, generates a lot of uh, special animation with the flip there. And then it saves the image to your, your desktop, right, in that folder written there. And once it's saved, then it goes to the beginning. It will read it up, and it's going to loop it up again. And we can have a quick look at the uh, image to video workflow here. There's a few elements I changed, right? So in this case, the, the seat there, I'm using another node there. It's just a simpler one instead of having two like before. Uh, now there's tree selector instead of two. Before, there was only the load image as an input to the image to video. There was the load video, so you can load the video uh, and it will take the last image to do the loop. But now the number three is this is the automation. This is where if you choose this one and you enable the toolbox, it's going to be taking the last image automatically there. The prom was slightly changed also because we wanted to make sure that when you enter prompt here, it works. But if you keep it empty and then you enable the toolbox, it's going to automatically grab the, the prompt that it can see from the image that you give it, right? So all the image that you're giving it, it's going to uh, do some uh, uh, vision model to see what it is, generate a prompt, and it's going to feed the prompt to that uh, positive prompt there. So if you look at the, the flow, it starts with the uh, image from the folder. It goes through on the top there to generate the prompt. Uh, and then it goes all the way to the right. And then it feeds the image to video group there. And there's a input for the prompt there, for the positive prompt, and the input for the image input. Right. So all of that is fed into that image to video. And then we just run it. That should enable the whole workflow to run in a unattended mode. So uh, let's look a bit closer just on the top here because again, it's a slight change, right? So you can see here on, on the top, there's tree selector now, just like before. Uh, you have the uh, input load uh, video, load image, but then the bottom one, that's the, the automation, right? So make sure you connect it to the bottom one to use the, the automation there. The green box on the bottom there, that's the trigger box, right? So if you use some LoRa and there's some trigger words, make sure you put it in there. And let's go to the, the right here. Now, uh, again, if we f follow that flow, this is the input into the positive prompt. And we can see here, this is the input to the image, right? So again, make sure you select the top one, right? The top one is the input of that automation that... Uh, get selected from the, the batch uh, folder. And at the end here, you have the, uh, the uh, extraction of the last frame that we mentioned before, right? Make sure again that you put the right path. If you don't choose the right folder where you put all your images or you, uh, you don't put the same folder from the beginning to the end, it's not going to work out, right? So make sure you set the right one. And all the toolbox is optional, right? I mean, if you don't care about all this, just disable both of them there and it's going to work exactly like before because I make sure that with the append there, you can put the prompt and it's going to work, right? Um, now that I think about it a bit, I mean, with the image flip, I'm, I'm just duplicating it so that it saves the video of the flip version and the unflip version so that uh, basically when you do the final merge, just pick the one that is uh, not flip uh, so that Basically, you have a video that's continuous while having that flip. It's going to force the AI to uh, to do more, uh, more motion there because otherwise, like I mentioned, it's going to stabilize, right? If you reuse the same video all the time, it's going to end up just be stuck in some motion there. So uh, let's run this. Let's see how this is executed. So again, I'm going to disable most of the uh, uh, of the groups because we don't need to run all of this just keep the uh, image to video uh, we're, go um, we're gonna do the the one because uh, the uh, in the toolbox that I've created for now 
is just for the one there. I've been spending a lot of time with it there to try it out. So I created the toolbox for the one. Uh, let's start with the batch image, right? So filling up a folder and running every image in that folder through the image to video. You can see how if you have a lot of image you want to try out to see what's going to do there, you fill up a folder, you let it run, and it's going to process the whole thing. So you can see here, um, I'm, I added basically three image. You don't see it, but I added three image. Um, I, I'll, I'm going to see on top here, just uh, flipping the value, just so that you can see the three image I added, right? But make sure the value is zero, right? So that it starts from the beginning. And the control there, control after generate, uh, make sure that you put it at the, uh, as increment because you want every time it runs that it increments to the next image, right? So make sure you put it as, as in increment. It's, it's written there in the note there, right? So just follow it, it should be fine. And with that, it's gonna start with that first image and it's gonna automatically increment when it finished the first loop. There. And it's gonna go through the whole folder. Um, we're gonna go to the right, just double check things, making sure that I'm setting the right LoRa. Uh, I pick the LoRa, let's say I choose the, um, the, uh, the live wallpaper. This is a LoRa where it just creates some gener general animation of the whole image as if it was a live uh, wallpaper that we, we want to use. And I'm going to make sure I put the right trigger words, right? So use the trigger word that match the LoRa or whatever else you want to put, right? I mean, uh, beyond it reading the image there, where generating the prompt from the image, it's going to add this extra um, uh, prompt that you just added there. So I'm going to put uh, 20 seconds here just so that my uh, my GPU can uh, breathe a bit there in between generation because I can tell you uh, if it could talk, it would say thank you very much because it's heating up pretty fast if uh, you just let it run uh, nonstop there. So let's uh, uh, go through this flow. Again, I'm double checking the LoRa is set. Everything is set correctly with the right model. Did I forget something? Because when you run this, you're going to let it run for a while, right? So it's good to double check stuff there. You don't want uh, many hours coming back and oops, I forgot to set something, right? So I set the right resolution. I'm putting it small for now. I know it's not going to look super great, but uh, it's for a tester, right? I mean, uh, I don't want to set it too high and wait a very long time. But uh, it's, this is just to show how the toolbox works, right? When you're going to do it for real then, you have a good flow, uh, set it to higher, higher resolution, to something that has a high step, high frame count, and so on, right? Um, with the key proportion here, I mean, even though I put it as a square, it's going to keep the proportion of the video, I'm sorry, of the image that you give it as an input there. So uh, don't worry about the proportion of the uh, uh, of the video. I'm, I'm duplicating this. This is also to, um, to uh, make sure that the color entry there is taken from the, the right uh, the right uh, input there. Uh, I can take it from the load image right there, or I can take it from the the uh, red image, the input image. In this case, I want the input image, right? And every image has its own color scheme, and I want to choose the right color scheme there. So that it tries to match the color scheme, right? And nothing else. It, it's going to make it look a bit nicer, a bit closer to the original image. So you can see I just click Run there with the instant, so choose that one. And you can see it's gonna start. It's gonna auto queue for 20 seconds. Now I'm fast forwarding just to see the result. And there you go. So see my image is now in a live wallpaper mode there. Very nice. And with this, without touching anything else there to cause it to run, I'm just browsing around. I'm not uh, executing anything. It's gonna generate again. It's auto, uh, in fact, it already started the next generation. So it's just automatically jump to the next one, feed the next image, generate the next prompt and runs, right? So I have nothing to do. I just let it run until it goes through the whole loop of image in my folder. There. And again, I'm going to go see the result. There was a lot of fast forward here, right? And again, re resolution is low, but it's just to show you how this is run 
in a unattended mode there with going through the whole folder. Again, I'm going to fast forward. Now we see the third image, which again, I didn't force and execute there. It was just running through the whole folder. Very nice uh, output there. And again, uh, you have a hundred image, you put it there, it's going to do it, right? You have five image, it's going to do it. So let's look at toolbox number two, the recursive uh, image to video. So this one, again, I'm going to enable the second toolbox. This one also need the first toolbox there because it's going to use that as an input also. So uh, for the toolbox number two, you need toolbox number one also. They're, they're dependent, uh, dependent on each one another. So in this case, again, I'm putting the value to zero so that it starts, but I'm just going to put uh, one image in it, right? So you want to put it fixed. Okay. So you want the one image that's going to do the image to video, and then it's going to refeed that last uh, image of, of the video generation, and it's going to generate from that again, and so on and so forth, right? So it's just one image that's going to flow through the whole workflow at uh, a recursive matter in theory forever until you ask it to stop, right? So again, make sure you put the sleep there. Um, every time it's going to generate a, a, a new prompt based on the last image. Uh, in this case, I put the trigger words. So for uh, for the Tai Chi, right? So yeah, I, I chose the Tai Chi uh, Laura. So I put the correct trigger word for that. I'm running it fast forward so that we can see the, the result. And there you go. So notice how there's two version, a flip and unflip there. So again, they're both going to be saved into your disk there. Just make sure at the end when you do the merge, you pick the right one. Otherwise, between one video to another, it's going to be flipping back and forth, right? So there you go. You can see the whole workflow running and it was unattended also. So reminder here, only change is the toolbox. That's the only change that I did here with a few small change into the workflow just to make it work with the toolbox. But the whole general idea is exactly the same as before. So let's look at a little bonus section. with that one okay so thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, automation tools uh, it's a uh, two extra toolbox that hopefully you find it uh, is going to be useful give it a try uh, hopefully uh, the unattended mode is going to help you save a lot of time there you let it run you go away and you come back right so uh, i hope you enjoy that and i'm sure i'm going to be adding more tool into the toolboxes um, I'm going to try to keep it separated because you only enable them and use them whenever it's needed, right? When it's not needed, when you don't want to do it, you can just disable them and it's going to still uh, uh, work as before. So I think that's the key here. So uh, thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you around next time. Bye-bye.